In the previous video, I showed you a general picture of how dialogue in assertion works. Today I want to focus on a small but still interesting aspect of it. As you know, typewriter uses so-called rules to represent individual lines of dialogue. These lines are displayed using a speech bubble, located above the player's head. Each of them can also influence the speaker's animation and expression. To achieve this, the system needs to know who the speaker actually is, and what component in the scene represents them. The problem is that dialogue is not tied to a specific location in the game. Depending on the playthrough, the same conversation may happen in a different area, in which case our speakers will be represented by totally different objects. All of this means that rules cannot directly reference their speakers, instead they need to use some kind of proxy. So each rule contains a fact that identifies the speaker. When a sequencer starts displaying a rule, it maps this fact to a corresponding component in the current scene. This component is then used to find an adequate position for the bubble and to access other components of the speaker, like reanimator. For all of this to work, the sequencer needs to know which speakers are available in the scene, and which facts correspond to them. Now, we could set this up manually using the inspector, but it would require us to repeat this process in every single scene. Additionally, each time we'd want to add or remove a speaker, we'd have to find the sequencer and adjust the mapping accordingly. A much better idea would be to automate this somehow. Fortunately, during his talk at Unite Austin 2017, Ryan Hipple presented a pattern called Runtime Sets, which can do exactly that. Picture a scriptable object that contains some collection. In this case, we're using a dictionary, where facts are keys and speakers are values. Each speaker component will reference this scriptable object, and upon enabling, add itself to the collection. Similarly, when the speaker gets disabled, it will remove itself from the dictionary. The sequencer can now reference the scriptable object and use it to translate facts into speakers. This approach reduces the amount of work that needs to be done. We only need to set up our speaker once, choose the fact that represents it, and point it to our scriptable object. Now, if we add this speaker to any scene, it will automatically register itself. Another benefit of using a runtime set is that speakers can choose if and when they want to be added. In assertion, a speaker will register itself only if it's close enough to participate in a conversation. It will also notify typewriter about this. For instance, if the architect is close enough to talk, his fact will be set to 1. Otherwise, it will be 0. This allows us to shape the conversation based on what speakers are available. Take a look at this object, for example. We can inspect it, in which case Alice will simply make a comment about it. But if it just so happens that the architect is close enough, a small conversation will happen instead. All in all, I find this runtime set pattern extremely useful, and maybe you'll too. But that's all I've got for today. As always, huge thanks to all my patrons for supporting the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.